Already we've been using message boxes to communicate with the user. We've been looping through collections, super powerful stuff only on video three of the series. So let's get back into our task. Now I did notice a slight omission from the previous video and that's to do with this line of code here. What do you think we've omitted? What have I forgotten to put in? Well, if this is happening, if we've got more than three files open, then we don't just want to flash up the message box. We want to make sure we don't continue running the rest of the code. How are we going to do that? We can put in a line of code here to just say exit sub. Just say exit sub here, if I can spell it correctly. That's just going to leave the routine. We're not going to do anything else. So let's just test this. Let's see what happens. I'm going to open a new file here. Just going to go to new. There we go. So now we've got an additional file open. Make sure you go back to our product data file. I'm going to get the VBA editor back too. And then working with the, these different files can be tricky. So make sure you're on the right file. Make sure you're on the product data file. Then we're just going to play the routine now. And we can see, yeah, we've got our message box there. And then what happens? And then nothing else seems to happen. I'm going to go through uh, step by step using the F8 key. Yes, we've got our message there. And then what happens? We just exit the sub. So that exit sub line of code, super powerful, super useful to know about. So I'm going to make sure I don't have this additional file open for now. I've got to make sure I update my office subscription there. OK, so what else we've got to do? Well, we're still involved with this file identification process. If any of the open files don't equal the value in this cell, don't equal the value in this cell, and the name of the file is not the name of the file the code lives in, then we've got a problem. We've got to tell the user about that. So how do we translate that logic into VBA? You might want to stop the video, think about how to do that. We're actually going to do this with multiple conditions on a conditional statement. So let's go ahead and try to put that together. So we're happy with this cell C3. Then the next condition, well, it's kind of similar. So I'm going to go ahead, copy paste, control C, control V on the Windows PC. And then we need a third statement. Now, this one is maybe more interesting. We want to say if the name of the file is not the name of this file, the file that we're currently working in, the file that the code lives in. How do we do that in Excel VBA? Do you know how to do that? Well, I'm going to take chrisbook.name, control C, control V, and then does not equal this workbook, this workbook.name. So this is a super useful piece of code for the workbook that the code is in. And Excel say to me, well, we need something to happen now because it's a conditional statement. So we can say then and then close the conditional statement here with ends if maybe one line further down there. And it's always good to indent, indent conditional statement, indent those loops. That's going to help us understand the code. So got our conditional statement here. What's going to happen if we run the code now? Can you guess what's going to happen? Well, if we run the code now, let's put a message box here. And I'm going to say there is a problem. I'm going to do a bit more than that. Super powerful technique. I'm going to concatenate, join together the text string with, with an object. And I'm going to say chrisbook.name. So this is the name of the workbook that is problematic. Your customers are going to love this when they see this dynamic communication. They're going to love this. Remember, we're looping through all of the open workbooks using this loop so we can harness the object that we're currently looking at in the loop and take the name property there. So there is a problem with I'm OK with VBA still struggling with English. So there's a problem with what's going to happen here, though. Are we even going to get to this line of code here? Let's just uh, step through the code here using the F8 key. Yep. So this is the name of the first workbook. And this word, but well, it equals the value in cell C3. So we're not going to get into the conditional statement. And the second word, but well, that equals the value in cell C4. So again, we're not going to get into the statement, into the conditional statement. Then the third word, but well, that equals uh, this workbook.name. So again, we're not going to get into the conditional statement there. OK, so how are we going to test that this is working? Well, you could change the name. Uh, of one of the files. Let's do a quick test by changing the value in this range here. So let's just say new data two. What do you think is going to happen now when we work through the code? What do you think is going to happen? Control S, save the file. So our first file is new data. 
Can you guess what's going to happen now? I think we're going to go into this conditional statement because this condition is now met. You can see we're into the conditional statement now. The condition is met and we've got this beautiful dynamic message telling the user exactly what they need to know. We're not just saying there's a problem with one of the files, then users thinking, well, which with which file? We're telling them precisely the problem that uh, we've got. It's with this new data file. Okay, and then we're looping through uh, the rest of the code there. So we can fix this by just going new data, fix that there. And then what would happen if we had a different file open? So I'm going to go ahead and open a new file now. Now I know one thing that's going to happen. Can you see what's going to happen now? I've got to make sure I reactivate my Excel subscription here. Stop the video. What's going to happen now when we run this code? Now, when you run this code, you've got to make sure we go back to the product data file. Back to the product data file, open the VBA editor. What's going to happen when we run this code? Just going to hit the F5 key and you can see we've got our mechanism working there because we've got more than three files open. So we're just going to switch off this mechanism for the time being. Yep. So we don't exit the sub. Just going to put an inverted comma by the exit sub line, line of code. Try to remember to come back to it in a second. Then I'm going to hit, hit the F8 key here. Go through the code. Yep. We should get that message. So our first file is new data. That should be fine. We don't go into the conditional statement. Second file, old data again, should be fine. We don't go into the conditional statement. Third file is this file, the file that the code's in. We don't go into the conditional statement. But what's going to happen with this fourth file, this new file? We haven't even given it a name yet. What's going to happen? Well, we're going to meet the condition now. And then you can see we get this beautiful dynamic message box telling the user exactly what is wrong there. So I'm going to close the file. Do an additional test now, try to kind of reset everything. And one weakness of this code, maybe we'll address this in later videos. Yes, if we're on if we're on a different workbook, this code might not work. And you could see some of the problems I was having there. So maybe we'll look at a future video to make this more explicit and clearer so that we uh, always refer to the workbooks that we're supposed to be referring to. So I want to reactivate this line of code here to make sure we do exit the sub. And then I've done our testing. I'm happy that this mechanism is working reasonably, reasonably well. Hope you're getting value out of this series. Your customers are going to love these mechanisms. These are the mechanisms I'm using in the real world. The most important thing is that user communication. The technical stuff is cool. We've got a conditional statement with multiple conditions. We've got loops. We've got message boxes. But the best bit, the best bit is the user communication. Your customer is going to love it.